Today I thought we would take another look at the Galaxy Tab S7 FE since it's been a while that this tablet came out way back in 2021. So is this still worth it in 2023? Now the price on here started at $529 back when it launched, which at the time I thought was a little overpriced, but now you can find it as low as just over $300 if you get the Amazon renewed version. So obviously now it's a lot better value, especially for a larger tablet like this. Pricing is gonna depend on which version you go with. You've got three different storage options, 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of storage. And as you go up in storage, you get two more gigabytes of RAM, going from four to six to eight gigabytes. So some pretty good options there. And then up to one terabyte of storage with a micro SD card. There's also a 5G version, so a lot of things to consider. Some of the downsides of the S7 FE, it only has 60 hertz refresh rate instead of 120 that you get on the Tab S7 Plus and S8 Plus, and those also have a Super AMOLED display versus LCD on this one. The 5G version is not quite as powerful as the Wi-Fi model, but still good enough for the stuff that I do. To me, the performance is gonna be very similar to the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, maybe slightly better if you have the Wi-Fi version, just with a bigger screen. As far as size, weight, the overall design is going to be almost identical to the Tab S7 Plus and S8 Plus, which is nice because then you can share the same cases and keyboard attachments between them. You also get a 12.4 inch LCD display with 2560 by 1600 resolution. So again, not super AMOLED, but still pretty decent for a larger screen like this. It looks pretty nice in person in my opinion. Plus I don't have to worry about a light bleed issue like I've got on my Tab S6 Lite. This one's really nice for watching videos, playing games, reading, just about anything you do on here. It just makes it a little easier on the eyes. And this one's probably a better option for drawing over the Tab S6 Lite since you have the bigger screen. And unfortunately, this one does not have a fingerprint scanner. As far as the battery goes, you've got a 10,090 milliamp hour battery, actually the same size as the Tab S8 Plus, but surprisingly, this one got worse battery life at only six hours versus seven hours on the Tab S8 Plus. In my battery drain test, so about average battery life for the S7 FE compared to other tablets I've tested. You also get up to 45 watt fast charging with this, which is really nice to have, especially considering how big the battery is. Performance wise, you get the Snapdragon 750G for the 5G version, Snapdragon 778 on the Wi-Fi version, and regardless of which version you go with, it's not gonna be as powerful as the Tab S7, Tab S7 Plus, or the S8 Plus. As you can see by the Geekbench scores, this one is the 5G version. So if you want the more powerful one, you'll definitely wanna go with the Wi-Fi model. So you are gonna notice things load a little faster or feel snappier when doing some multitasking on the S7 plus or s8 plus compared to the fe but this one's still going to be one of the better budget options that you can find in my opinion even in 2023 when testing PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9, the S7 FE handled those without too much trouble, didn't seem to overheat or have frame rate drops where the games just aren't playable. Just keep in mind, if you're playing games on a larger screen like this, it's gonna be a little bit harder to reach to touch certain areas of the screen when compared to the smaller regular size Tab S8 or S7. But if you're gonna connect a controller to this larger screen, it's actually pretty fun to game on. Software wise, this is currently on Android 13 as of this video, and you get a pretty similar experience on here compared to other Samsung tablets. You'll also notice you now have the taskbar along the bottom, making it easier to get to other apps. If you don't like that on there, luckily you can turn that off in the settings. Just like some other Samsung tablets, you have the option of Samsung Free or Google Discover left of the home screen. One thing to keep in mind though, the new Galaxy Tab S8 FE, or whatever they're gonna call it, should be coming out before long. So it should be interesting to see what kind of specs, what kind of features that's gonna have. Nice thing is you can use the same keyboard from the Tab S7 Plus or the newer Tab S8 Plus for this FE model if you wanna be a little more productive using Samsung DeX, which is nice to have in my opinion. Definitely makes it feel a little closer to a regular laptop. Again, just a nice option to have on a tablet. You can also use this tablet as an external monitor if you're using a Windows PC, sort of like having a second or third monitor, which is another nice option to have. As far as software support goes, I believe 
believe this one should have four years software, five years security updates, and what, we're on the third year? So you still have some good life left on this one yet. The other great thing about Samsung tablets in general is you get the S Pen included, which is gonna be nice for drawing, taking notes, just moving around the software. And like I said earlier, this one's probably gonna be a better option for those who do a lot of drawing. So you have a little bit more breathing room with a larger 12.4 inch screen. Then you get a speaker on each side of the tablet with Dolby Atmos. And while these aren't gonna sound quite as loud as the Tab S8 Plus, still pretty decent in my opinion. And you don't get a headphone jack on this one, but considering Bluetooth headphones are more popular than ever, I'm sure that's not gonna be a huge deal for most people. But here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what the speakers sound like. <laughs> When it comes to cameras on here, I feel like they're decent on here. I feel like they're okay, or at least decent for a tablet. You get an eight megapixel rear facing, five megapixel on the front. You also get the auto framing feature on here, which should be good for things like Zoom meetings, video conference calls. This isn't gonna compete against cell phones. Here's a few quick samples, just to give you an idea of what to expect. So as you can see, there are some things to consider about the Tab S7 FE and whether it's still worth it in 2023. In my opinion, if you can get it cheap enough, it may be worth it for some out there, especially if you just want a bigger version of the Tab S6 Lite. But I also might hesitate just a little to see when the newer Tab S8 FE comes out. But depending on what types of stuff you need a tablet for, this one could be good enough for most people. But if you need to do video editing or more intense stuff, then you you'll probably want to look at something like the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus or iPad Air 5 to get something that's a little more powerful. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.